Uh, okay, good morning. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizer for giving me opportunity to uh, present my work here. <coughs> Uh, the title of my talk is Efficient Control Protocols for an Active Orenstein Olympic Particle. And this work is in collaboration with Sabine Clapp from TU Berlin and David A. Sivak uh, from SFU Canada. Okay, so we all are familiar with what are active particles. So active particles are generally those particles which gain energy from the environment and perform directed motion. And at random interval of time, they actually switch their direction. So there are different type of mo uh, models which model these active particles. I am particularly interested in this active Orenstein Olenburg particle. And I just want to emphasize that uh, this particle can also realize an experiment. OK, uh, so uh, this is my setup. So uh, we have uh, this active particle in this no. Uh, we have this active particles in this uh, uh, nonlinear potential this red color nonlinear potential and then there's a on top of that there is a like a, a trap and because of this trap and this nonlinear potential the system experiences this purple colored uh, nonlinear potential and this is the extra term that i'm adding to this velocity uh, velocity term is extra con uh, additional contribution uh, which has this kind of dynamics which makes this brownian particle to behave as active orenstein ulenberg particle and this y has this uh, exponential temporal correlation uh, with correlation time ta. So in the next slide, I will just explain what is the purpose of this trap. So uh, again, uh, so we have active particle in this red color nonlinear trap, a uh, nonlinear potential, and there is a, a trap, and the trap actually drags the particle over this nonlinear potential. And the question that I am asking that how to drive this particle from left to right in an optimal way so that the extra, uh, external work can be minimized or dissipation can be minimized. So what do we, I mean by external work? So external work along a single stochastic trajectory is the time integral of force that is coming due to change in the protocol or parameter. And the parameter is here basically trap minimum times the rate of change of a parameter, that lambda. And the interesting quantity to compute is excess work, which is the additional or extra amount of work that I pay to drive the system uh, above the quasi-static limit. So the quasi-static work is basically the work that I compute uh, when I drive the system in a quasi-static fashion or in a slow driving limit. And this work, when I take a, a difference between this work and free energy, equilibrium free energy difference, and this actually approaches to uh, zero, almost zero, so in the large TA limit. And this is because this additional contribution that I was adding in Brownian particles, and that goes to zero in the TA going to infinity limit. But in the opposite limit, it becomes an another Gaussian noise. So it will give you another effective temperature, basically. OK, so now if I have this stochastic work, I can take average over multiple realization. And that will be like average excess work. And this is a central quantity of interest in, uh, for this talk. So uh, the question that I am asking that if I minimize this dissipation or excess work uh, over all set of protocol, and the protocol starts from lambda i to lambda f, where lambda i indicates the trap location, uh, initial trap location. So what will be the optimal protocol? Is it linear protocol or maybe non-linear one? We don't know. It's a very complicated problem, even for passive particle. OK. So fortunately, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a framework applicable in linear response regime where we can compute optimal protocols for passive particles. So this says that, OK, excess power, which is the extra power over the quasi-static limit, goes as uh, a product. It's just product of two quantities, zeta lambda and lambda dot square, where zeta lambda uh, is the generalized friction coefficient, which is the uh, 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 friction coefficient or resistance experienced by the particle in the control parameter space. And lambda dot is the speed by which I am driving the particle. And uh, uh, Wx uh, is the ex uh, excess work, which is time integral of this excess power. And now this, if I plug it this here, this is basically a simple minimization problem. And with minimizing that excess work, I will get that optimal protocol speed which is inversely proportional to square root of this friction coefficient. So whenever the friction coefficient is larger, I have to drive slower. Otherwise, I can drive faster. 
So this framework has been used in a couple of other studies. And uh, for instance, recently we used this, uh, this framework to drive this F1 ATPS molecular motor to uh, uh, synthesize ATP uh, molecule at low dissipation cost. Okay, so I'm going to use this uh, passive linear response uh, regime uh, framework to obtain the optimal protocols. So let me rephrase the problem. So we have active particle, we are driving this active power particle over this nonlinear trap, uh, a nonlinear potential of using this harmonic trap. So as we can see from this video that as the trap moves, the total potential energy actually change, uh, changes its shape. So for instance, I'm just showing here snapshots depending upon the uh, trap location of total potential energy against particle position. And vertical dash line indicates the uh, indicates lambda. So we can see that there are different types of potential energy here. And uh, okay, so the uh, correlation time actually, okay, I, I can keep the trap at different location. I can measure force fluctuation. And with that force fluctuation, I can measure uh, the uh, force autocovariance function. And this for force autocovariance function decays slower for some, uh, some cases of lambda when the total potential energy has double well kind of behavior. I can put this force autocovariance function in this formula. I can compute friction coefficient. And with friction coefficient, I can compute the optimal protocol speed. So here I'm showing uh, uh, three different quantities. Uh, and color intensity increases with increasing the value of persistent time. So in the first row, I'm showing friction coefficient uh, as a function of trap location. So friction coefficient is maximum for some particular lambda for which the to double, uh, total potential has double well kind of behavior. And this, and this is optimal protocol speed I'm showing. Uh, this optimal protocol speed is smaller in the region when friction coefficient is larger, otherwise uh, 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 optimal speed is larger. And red horizontal line indicate the naive speed, that means constant velocity. I'm driving with constant speed. And if I integrate this uh, optimal speed, I get uh, uh, the, the protocol or how I should drive the trap as a function of, uh, uh, as a function of time. So I will use this naive and design protocol to compute excess work and to see whether design or optimal protocol is working better or not. So let me first show that, okay, how does the excess work behave as a function of duration of protocol duration. So obviously it decreases with protocol duration. This is because when protocol duration is larger, dissipation will be smaller. And to check whether design protocol is performing better than the naive one, we take the ratio of naive dissipation divided by uh, uh, design uh, dissipation and we can see that <coughs> for considerable range, uh, proto uh, protocol duration design protocol is performing better when and this we can see when the ratio is above one uh, just one second okay and then uh, we can actually compute the power uh, the work saving by taking the difference between naive and design uh, access work for extreme protocol duration this uh, work saving goes to zero but in the intermediate regime work saving is large because design protocol is performing better. So overall message is that this, we keep the trap at different location. We measure the force fluctuation. By measuring the force fluctuation, we measure friction coefficient. By measuring friction coefficient, we measure protocols. And using that protocol, the optimal protocol, if we drive the system, the uh, access work or dissipation is smaller. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm happy to take questions. Since Hello. So I have a question like um, uh, while refining this excess work, so you chose the reference to be quasi-static limit, right? Yes, exactly. <coughs> but uh, in active particle, uh, in the quasi-static limit, uh, the dissipation sort of diverges. Uh, dissipation should diverge. Why? Uh, I showed that uh, the quasi uh, this uh, difference doesn't diverge actually. Oh, that's not my question. I mean, uh, in recent, I uh, I mean saw some work by Anthony ah. Fodor and all. Uh, so they showed that uh, the quasi-static limit is not the optimal one. I mean, I mean the dissipation diverges there. Ah, okay. I, I, I'm not familiar with that. But okay, we, uh, so this actually shows that when Ta goes to infinity, we actually go to equilibrium case where this quasi-static work becomes equal to free energy difference, equilibrium free energy difference. So you can we can talk about it. I mean, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Just thank the speaker.